Okay, what I'm going to make is I'm going to make a, a large plate with the rib. I have a, I've made a small plate. People have seen it in a learning size. The DVD on here before was is a beginner size piece of clay. And the rib has a lot more uses than just a beginner size piece of clay. Once you get a hold of the rib, you can learn how to throw very large pieces. So right now I'm flattening this out to be a plate. So a plate is just a short, fat cylinder. So in order to get a short, fat cylinder, I have to throw a short, fat pancake to make it out of. Okay, now it's always difficult to center the outside rim. This part's always very wiggly and hard to center and you can spend time fighting with it or not. I like just to get it to the size I want. And then as the wheel spins, I hold my needle still. And of course the needle goes down with the spinning wheel. And it's round. It's not cheating, it's my plate, it's my plate. And then I have somewhere to keep my needle. So after I've done that, now you've got a nice, nice pancake in which you can pull your plate out of. Okay, I'm going to open this. Um, with, a, with about a 45 degree angle going down, making sure you go down as far as you want for the bottom. So once you have it open, it's more difficult to make it thinner. And now I'm going to open with my left hand, and I'm going to pull the clay across with my left hand. But I'm, as I pull across, this clay here wants to peel off. So I keep it in check with my thumb, and then my right hand goes over top and they pull across and clay has a has a speed where it wants to go it wants to open. I'm letting it open quite slowly. A number of revolutions of the wheel are happening before I make distance across the bottom of the plate. And all the time I'm keeping it in check with my thumb here and my right hand there. And we just pull across. allowing that to peel. Now as you get close to the edge, to the outside edge, you can move your thumb that was supporting here to the supporting that way so your your hand is squeezing together and your left hand is supporting. Again moving across at the speed that feels comfortable with your foot. And after you moved across a few times, you'll know what I mean. And all the time keeping it connected as this goes across, I'm working my thumb this way to make sure it stays connected and my right hand is working to make sure all these pieces stay together and never peel. <laughs> Sometimes it's appealing. So I pull it across. all those edges blended as well as you can. Now I've got it across about, about as much as I want to before I start opening up the other way. So at this point I'm going to clean up the inside bottom a bit. There's some thickness there. I'm going to get rid of it just by peeling it off, going from outside to in, and then I'm going to level it across. Still have thickness there. Working on that radius. So before I go any further, I want to compact this bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work back and forth along this radius, one leveling it, and two compacting all the particles. And I like to go past center, and then back again, just to give it your bottom a workout. Okay, 
now I'm going to start throwing the, the walls. I'm going to continue pulling my inside, inside hand across and my outside hand is going to go up a bit. And we're going to get some height there. Again, making sure these edges stay compacted because you're bringing the two sides together. As you pull up, keep it a uh, cone shape. If you keep the top tilted in, it will plate and bowl out when you tell it to, and not when it chooses to. large plate. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all that water I have in the inside. And one more pull. I want to make sure I maintain this edge to be uh, fairly thick because when I open this plate it's going to open up at least to be twice the size and so twice the size is going to be half the thickness so if you start out with a thin edge by the time you have your plate open you're going to have a very thin rimmed plate and a plate of this size deserves a nice thick rim it has to be a, a plate of substance so what I'm going to do with this, this rib, this is where the rib comes in now has a nice little uh, curve to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down the side and I'm going to blend with this edge the wall of the plate into the foot of the plate so I don't have a, a square thing happening. And I like this, you can hang on to it whatever way is comfortable, put my elbows around my knees, my el or my knee, my elbows into my rib cage. And I'm going to bring it down, and I'm not going to go straight down, but I'm going to bring it down and tip the toe toward my tummy. If you don't do that, it wants to chatter wants to go like this and once you've got it going on the merry-go-round it's very difficult to stop it. So now I'm going to open this up. Now I've got a nice join for my wall to my bottom and I'm just going to with a 45 degree angle open this plate up. As you see the rib enables you to throw a very large piece. I'm going to tidy this up. Uh, the, what, the clay out here is very open. The particles are splayed open because I threw it very quickly. So I want to give it one throw to compact them. And I'm going to compact the rim. But notice this rim is still a nice thick rim because I started off with it so thick. You couldn't have a plate this size and have a little wussy rim. So I'm just going to compact that smooth it out. Now I'm going to tidy up the bottom a bit more and I like, again it's personal, but I like the throwing lines in the bottom. I spent when throwing this plate trying to get it smooth and now I'm just going to, with my fingers, make some bold throwing lines across the bottom to give the plate just a bit more personality. I like the way the glazes break on the lines and Anyway, there's throwing a large piece 